Jackson, reporting from Kids First, and today I have the pleasure to catch up with Joshua De La Cruz, Filipino American actor, musician, and singer. He plays a fictional version of himself as the new host of the reboot series, Loose Clues and You, as the third main man of the franchise. Now, Nickelodeon's hit interactive preschool series will skidoo onto DVD on June 2nd for the first time ever. How exciting! Uh, first and foremost, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's crazy times, but because I work in Toronto six months out of the year, uh, I don't get to spend as much family time as I want. So uh, the silver lining in all of this is that I'm able to reconnect and spend quality time with my wife and our dog all together as a family unit. So, um, you know, I'm so thankful for everybody out there, for all the, our first responders and our frontline workers and, and delivery people that are making, keeping the country going so that we can stay home. So uh, I'm, I'm doing well, thank you. I agree with you. Um, I think I've spent more time with my family than ever. But mm -hmm. yes, I also thank all the frontline workers who are putting their determination and keeping us safe. And yeah. staying home does save lives. So yeah. I am grateful every single day. Well, oh, first you. most, you were introduced to theater by your older sister, correct? Yes, yes, I was. Yeah, um, I heard you were in the eighth grade and after consistent training at the Paper Mill Playhouse, which is based in actually your hometown of Milburn, New Jersey, you went on to start on Broadway. Oh my gosh, and The King and I, and then Aladdin. I mean, you wanted to do something with the gifts and skills that you've learned along the way, but you stated you didn't really know what you wanted. What did you realize that your passion for theater would lead you in a different direction? Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't until I was in, uh, it was, I was in Aladdin on Broadway and I'd been with the show for almost five years at that point. And, um, what was strange was that I loved my job five years later. I love, you know, doing the show eight times a week, uh, so almost, uh, every day of the year. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I loved singing. I, I loved doing the show. I loved being with the, my cast and, and the crew, like we're a family there. And I, I couldn't be happier, but there was still something tugging at me that I wanted something more. And it wasn't right. until I got the audition for Blues Clues that everything started to kind of come together like, oh, you, you want to help people and you want to keep singing and dancing. And um, up until that point, I didn't know how to bridge those two things together. And Blue's Clues was the perfect outlet for me to do that. And um, after every callback, it, it, just, it, it just solidified uh, more and more to me that this is what I wanted to do. And then the Mr. Rogers documentary came out, who was who I watched growing up. And that was what really sold it to me. I was like, oh, this is the thing, and this is what I want, and I, I'm so happy that it, it worked out in my favor. <laughs> wow. I have to say, one of my favorite things about Blue Spoons and You is you really engage with the viewers, making them feel like they're a part of the show, directing mostly, mainly, all the questions to them. And I think yeah. that's why they love the show so much, is because you connect with them in a different way that other shows don't. So, mm -hmm. I'd say that's one of my favorite parts about it. It's pretty cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Natalia. Yeah. Uh, along with that, during the filming process, you're accommodated to like a green screen. And you stated in one of your previous interviews, if you're lucky enough, you'll get like a little box to where typically blue would stand, which is, which is pretty cool, actually. And I was kind of wondering, how are you able to connect with the different characters, such as blue, since they're really all animated? What helps you visualize how the scene plays out? Yeah, well, you know, that's a great question because it's true. I, 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 if I'm lucky, I'll get a tennis ball or a piece of tape or if I'm holding Mr. Salt, Mrs. Pepper, there'll be a little tracking marker that sits on my hand. But it's all imagination. And um, once you get the eye lines right, there's an amazing team behind the camera that's making sure that I'm looking in the right place, that I'm, I, I'm leaving enough time for the animation to go over my head and then land on my hand. Um, but beyond that, you know, as kids, when we were kids, I, all that we had were our imaginations. So I would, and I was an only boy. I'm sandwiched between two girls, so I was using my imagination a lot to to uh, 
you know, just to play off by myself into an imaginary world. And as we grow older, we, we start to lose touch with that vibrant imagination that we had as kids. And when I started studying acting and went back into school, it, it re-energized that, that imagination and really caused me to, to start thinking of like, oh, what, what else is possible? And so... Uh, getting this show again is just another checkpoint in my life to uh, re-energize that imagination that has always kind of been brewing inside and exercise it and make it stronger. And so this show has given me another opportunity to do that, which is amazing because, you know, <laughs> your, your mind is constantly working and is constantly being refreshed and staying young. And it's, it's, it's awesome. Wow. I mean, what I didn't know is all the little things that go into this. I mean, you were explaining, you have to go over your head, managing time, little yeah. marks. There's a lot of things that go into it. So, wow, that's yeah. pretty crazy, actually. And yeah. one thing I wanted to know is, one thing I think is amazing is that you were the first Asian American playing the host. I mean, this is inspiring, especially to the new generation of kids watching Blue's Clues and You, as well as those Asian Americans who will see themselves in this character. I, I yeah. read that. I read that online, at least half of all stories across TV, movies, and streaming fail to portray one speaking or named Asian or Asian American on screen. Do you yeah. feel any added pressure knowing that you're breaking a new barrier in this role? You know, that's such a great question and so beautifully put. I, I, it's, I, I do feel the responsibility, but um, that to always be my best self as, as much as I can be, because we're all human, right? And um, I, I recognize the responsibility of this role that now people are going to be looking at you outside of this show. And it's like, well, is this person the, the same when he's out there? Or is he, you know, a mean person? Um, which I'm not. But again, we all get frustrated in our day-to-day -day life. But this has been such an amazing responsibility because it starts getting me to think, to, to practice the things that I preach on the show uh, or that I teach on the show is, is that to lead with kindness and to be curious and to be empathetic and um, not to forget that. So now that I know that I have this responsibility of the show, I've actually, because I've been practicing these things out in the real world, um, it's been helping me just be overall in a better mood. Uh, I'm not carrying a, a frustration or anger with me um, as nearly as much as I would be if I weren't thinking about, you know, you have to uh, remember how you act on a day-to-day -day basis is very important. And, you know, uh, the more you practice it, the stronger you'll be at, at being that kind of person. And um, I think that this is incredibly important for, um, for anyone, not just uh, Asian Americans growing up watching this show. If you don't see yourself represented on screen or in a, a CEO position or a doctor or anywhere in, a, in something that you love, there is no reason that you can't be that person to open the door for everyone else. And people open the door before me so that I could walk through. And I'm so thankful for that. And anything is possible. Just, you know, keep being kind, um, practice your curiosity and practice your kindness. Kindness takes practice, practice and patience. So be patient with yourself and try to be patient with everyone else. <laughs> Wow, that is, that is so inspiring. Thank you for that inspiring message. Now, um, we have to wrap up a little bit, but I just want to say thank you so much. Remember, I'm Natalie Jackson, reporting from Kids First, and I have just interviewed Joshua Della Cruz, the new host of the Reboot series, Blue's Clues and You. And just to remind everyone, stay tuned because the DVD is coming out on June 2nd exclusively at Walmart. I am so pumped. I know all of you Blue's Clues and You fans are. So make sure to check this out and other interviews on the YouTube, our weekly podcast, and website. Remember, I'm Natalia Jackson once again. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Natalia. Bye. Bye. Blues, Clues, and You, Nickelodeon.